Hey, trying to fix my camera up here. Out in the summer shop, which would be the garage, the man cave side of it. Look at this thing. Look at it, would you? And look how long that is. <laughs> I have no idea what this stem came from. It was in that bag of estate pipes I got. I cleaned it up, put a bamboo stumble in there, filled this Missouri Meerschaum with some luxury bullseye flank. Anyways, I even dried it a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. It may behave itself. I don't know. First smoke out of this Cobbenstein. It's my word, Cobbenstein. I've invented that now. It was a bit of a trick. Getting the stumble to fit was easy. Getting this little pissant to fit in there was not. So I had to bore out the bamboo, insert a maple plug, and then bore out the maple plug to fit this. And it took like, I don't know, three or four tries to get it. So they didn't split anything. A little bit of beeswax and wow, cool, really cool. It's almost a church warden. It's so long. God, I wonder how long that is. Let's see if I have a tape measure somewhere. I see one. Are you like me? Do you have tape measures sprinkled liberally throughout your domicile? I do. I have them everywhere. <clears throat> yeah, got one right here. I, it's, I, I haven't measured it yet. I'm saying it's probably six inches. Five and a half, five and three quarters. Yeah, it was close. Whatever. It's a lovely. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that's good. So I'm working on a briar. I had a rusticated Rhodesian that was beat to frag. It was a uh, like one of those squared off stems, and I kept trying to deal with it, and it kept breaking and breaking. And finally, it just broke right off. I had no idea briar was as soft as it is. Briar's like, God, you can work it with butter knives and fingernail files. It's like that soft. Anyways, I've managed, what I've done is I got the briar bowl that I have completely removed the rustication, sanded it down, dyed it, buffed it. It looks kind of sharp. I got a little bit of a uh, bamboo stummel on there with a maple peg going into the bowl and a different maple peg connecting the, the stem. And it's been a nightmare. It's, it's gluing up right now. It looks sharp, but I don't know if it'll ever work. I'll, I'll show it to you in the next video. I've let it go out. I'm just tamping. We tamp because we care. Mm. Big Hippo really doesn't care 
for luxury bullseye flight. He says it's shite. Mm -mm. I was comparing it because I opened up the tin, gave it a sniff, and I said, God, that smells familiar. It smells really familiar. And I'll let you do your own comparisons, but there's a Dunhill blend and it smells almost exactly like this. And I won't say Dunhill Dark Flake, but you do the math. I like it. Some people may not care for it. It's got a really nice, I want to call it fruitcake kind of aftertaste. Reminds me of Christmas years ago. Everyone got a fruitcake for Christmas and nobody ever ate the fucking thing because it was disgusting. And when you finally braved up the guts to take a bite of it, you realize, holy shit, this is laced with rum. It's like three pieces of fruitcake and you're a fucking fruitcake. It was great. <laughs> Once you got past the bitterness, and I don't get the bitterness from this. Not the fruitcake bitterness, but that raisiny. And I think that probably comes from the Virginias. I don't know. Some of you guys are far more educated on your palate than I am as far as what flavors taste like what. And I don't know. I don't know Art, but I know what I like. Well, I do know Art. He's a good fella. So I was just thinking I should show you something. Hmm. Canadian, eh? In Canada, we have a lot of restrictions on our weapons and firearms and what we can shoot and what we can't. Even though, like our, my U.S. brethren, our countries were opened with trap lines and guns. In Canada, more than the U.S., because... The voyageurs came through and they had you know, they had a canoe, snowshoes, a gun, and some trap wire. And they opened up our country. But Canada, we have the worst gun laws in the world. Doesn't stop crime. Gun laws don't stop crime. Gun restriction doesn't stop crime. I'm not going to ramble about that, but what I do know is I have a sweet little item because like in the UK and in Australia, it's like, okay, I can't have a center fire, 30-06, whatever. I can't have that. I, I just can't. I can have an air gun. And I grew up, my first gun was an air gun. I grew up shooting my first center fire weapon that I ever shot was a 12 gauge shotgun I was nine years old and I was shooting skeet with my father and his friends I, I grew up with that and then the long gun registry came in and we had to register all our shotguns and I just said dad here take them all I'm done with them I'm not doing this I got thinking I enjoyed shooting. I didn't I don't care if I hunt or not anymore. That doesn't matter to me. I enjoyed the discipline of shooting. Of putting projectile A on point B. So I decided, against my wife's better judgment, I'd get back into pelly guns. Now, in Canada, you have a limit. It's a 495, 500 foot per second limit. Anything over that, you need a regulations to buy. It's like, okay, whatever. I don't, I'm not trying to kill anything with it. I just wanted to shoot target. So I bought a uh, Crossman 1377C. The C stands for Canadian Edition, which means it was dialed back to 500 feet per second. So being the inquisitive bastard that I am, I immediately thought, why? Well, how, how do you do that? How do you dial it back when all the American ones are 600? 
So I took it apart. And on the Canadian ones, they have a bleed valve. You know, a pressure relief valve. So when it hits a certain point, a little spring opens up and it bleeds off air pressure. Until you fill it with JB Weld. And then, I decided the 1377 C was one of the most modifiable platforms for an air gun you can get. It's a it's a pumper, right? It's a pump it up to 10 times, 20 times, whatever you feel like. Depends on your wallet, really. So, first thing I did was bought a scope for it. <clears throat> well, the scope wouldn't fit on it because it had a plastic breech, so I had to buy a metal breech. Well, if I'm buying a metal breech, I might as well buy a longer barrel because that improves efficiency. So I bought an 18-inch barrel. While I'm doing that, I might as well get a shoulder stock because, you know, I always wanted a carbine. Hang on. I'm coming back. I keep it in a little guitar case. Carabine stock, center point scope, 18 inch barrel. And a few internal modifications that I want to talk about. And so I'm, and it went from a 177, it was a 7, a 177 caliber. The, the metal breech that I put on here, which goes from here all the way back to here, that's a 22 caliber and a 22 caliber barrel. So I went from a 177 to a 22. Uh, power mods were done. Uh, this will, it will kill. <laughs> yes, it will. I use it for, I, I enjoy using it for, for target practice, plinking. It will plink the brains out of a squirrel at 100, 150 feet, no problem. Um, my neighbors love me because they have a pigeon problem. They've noticed they haven't had a pigeon problem lately. So at 100 feet, I've got it. I get it screwed in at, at 20 feet, and then with a few clicks, I can screw it into 100 feet. And yeah, I'm pushing the brains out of Pigeon's ear at 100 feet, no problem, all day, all night. It's kind of fun. I only wish the pigeons around here weren't feral. I wish they were more like country pigeons and actually eat them. Have you noticed how long this thing is set? It's gurgly a little bit because I think my draft hole is a little small, but. Hmm. Should almost be on a MacArthur style. Should be like three inches longer on the. Like that. So, anyways. As always, I'm up to no good. We got a little snow coming. I hope you can stay dry. I hope the snow misses you. And I hope you have a great weekend. Take care, folks. Why won't that button work? Make it work. Go. Work. Did it work?